good friends. Doc South here. Just, uh, well, let me just adjust that. Another uh, quick video. I, I uh, This is from my uh, book, The Book of Doc Blurps, The Starter Set. Honestly, I think you can get it on Amazon if you wanted to. Although, gee, I hope they haven't dropped it. We haven't sold one in a couple years. <laughs> but, yeah, The Book of Doc Blurps, The Starter Set. Maybe Amazon's got it and get it for you. I, I don't know. I don't have any copies. I think I got this one. Yeah, I think this might be, no, no, this, uh, I think the last, yeah, last copy I got until I can get more printed. Uh, but, well, yeah, that takes money. Uh, but I got this chapter 98. I One I, I rather liked, I, I wrote a while, oh, of course, years ago now, uh, called Dog Tunnels, People Tunnels. Here you go. It's a shorty. Uh, when I walk Millie, our hound, there's a spot out in the yard or where uh, that she likes to visit almost every time. Uh, there's an area of shrubbery near the big tree. Uh, it, it, it became overgrown quite a bit, and in the middle of all the bushes and weeds, there's this naturally formed uh, uh, tunnel. Yeah, the tunnel goes from one side of the thicket to the other. Millie can't resist entering on one end and coming out the other. It's, uh, again, it's just all this shrubbery around this uh, I don't even know what kind of tree it is, but it's a biggie. Oh, heaven help you if it fell on you. And uh, I'd say the thicket runs probably about 25 feet long by maybe 10 foot wide. And in summer, yeah, it's uh, just a mass of leaves, sticker bushes, berries, uh, probably poison oak, you know, a lot of stuff. And uh, again, Millie loves, she goes right in. Uh, well, while she's in there, I have to release the leash, and so she's on her own. That might be the whole thing. Uh, she, she takes her time in there, and I can hear her sniffing all the way through. Sooner or later, she pops out the other end, wagging her tail. Sometimes she'll uh, turn around, before I can get to her, she'll turn around and reverse course to make it a round trip. Uh, she'll do this trip sometimes back and forth uh, for a while, almost every time we go out, uh, if that tunnel's there. Uh, and she thinks about it. She, over she goes. Okay. And I got to thinking how I had a, a similar uh, comfort zone myself. Um, here's one uh, that when I was a kid was uh, one of my favorite uh, things to do. One of my favorite things to do. I'd save my allowance of seven cents a day and I'd, and I'd go out and buy a, well, a number of rolls of kite string. I think it was like a nickel uh, for a ball of kite string, about 150 feet. And then I'd go into my room, shut the door, and tie one end of the string to a dresser drawer knob. Uh, I'd then pull the string and secure it to maybe a doorknob, uh, another doorknob, uh, closet door perhaps. Then I'd drag it off some more and, and loop it around a closet latch. And uh, maybe I'd continue this for an hour or more, stretching out all my kite string back and forth until I uh, finally had this giant web. It was a uh, pretty psychotic looking, but once it was done, anyone who ventured into my room had to be impressed. <laughs> when, I, when I was done with the uh, construction, the rest of the day would be spent crawling around inside the web and checking it out from all angles. I guess the web was to me what the tunnel in the bushes is to Millie. I guess it's kind of a comfort zone thing, I guess. Of course, the two of us might be nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's funny, but... One of my favorite jobs uh, was uh, when I was a boiler maker was to climb inside a big boiler. You know, there's boilers that are as big as a house and uh, or certainly as big as a tractor trailer. And they to work on them, you got to climb in them. Not everyone likes doing that. Oh, no. Oh, people can get really shook. But I, I don't know, as long as I had, a, a, you know, people make it, well, as long as the boiler was turned off, and the uh, fuel lines and the water lines and the steam lines uh, secured. And, of course, you always check that before you went inside. You'd be in a heap of hurt if the steam all of a sudden from another boiler entered the boiler you were working on. You'd Well, you wouldn't make it. Uh, you'd be a painful, horrible death. But while you were in there, I don't know. I kind of, man, maybe I was a turtle in a past life or something. I don't know. But I always felt really kind of comfortable inside working with the tubes and the and the cement and the bricks and all that, throwing them together. Yeah. End of the day, I'd climb out, and people would look at me and say, how did you stand that in there? 
eight hours you were in that boiler. I said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I came out for coffee, you know. <laughs> but that was about it. I don't know. To me, it was, um, I guess it's like some people don't mind being up high on a building. <coughs> Myself, I never really cared for that that much. So anyway, I thought I'd say. Kind of fun. Anyway, so uh, there you go. Enjoy and uh, have yourself enjoy your day and have yourself a ball. And if you dig crawling into things, well, go find yourself a tunnel and crawl in. Have you have yourself a time, okay, or not? Okay, we'll see you later. Thank you. God bless. Bye now.